All right, this is uh, Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Jesus is that light of life. Turn your King James Bibles to Matthew chapter 20. We're going to start in... Oh, let's see, verse 17, Matthew 20, verse 17. This is going to be the continuation of the cup of the Lord. And this is the beginning of where we start in the New Testament. In the previous three studies, we did the Old Testament. Well, now we're going to do the New Testament. I'll probably have at least one more study after this one. I'm trying to keep the studies under an hour. All right, Matthew chapter 20 and verse 17. And Jesus going up to Jerusalem took the twelve disciples apart in the way and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem. Do you know why they go up to Jerusalem? Because Jerusalem is built on mountains. That's why you always go up. To Jerusalem. Matter of fact, Jerusalem's built on seven mountains. Keep that in mind the next time you read the book of Revelation where it says the horse sits on seven hills. Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man, Jesus called himself the Son of Man, and the Son of Man shall be betrayed unto the chief priests and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death. Now, when they're talking about the chief priests, they're talking about the, the, uh, the Jewish priests that were doing the work in the temple. We're not talking about Catholic priests because the Catholic Church does not even exist. Okay? Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be betrayed unto the chief priests and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death. Uh, the scribes were the copyists of the Bible of their day. Verse 19. And shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to crucify him, and the third day he shall rise again. So, right here, Jesus is telling them he's going to be betrayed, he's going to be condemned to death, He's going to be mocked, scourged, and crucified. And then on the third day, he's going to rise again. Verse 20. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. Hey, Jesus, can I ask you uh, a favor? That's basically what she's saying. Verse 21. And he said unto her, what wilt thou? In other words, uh, what is it that I can do for you? What would you like? You know. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? She saith unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on thy right hand, and the other on the left, in thy kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, Ye know not what, you what ye ask. In other words, you, you don't know what you're asking. Ye you know not what ye ask. Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of? Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of? And to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They send him. We are able. I mean, here it is, Jesus is saying, oh yeah, you, you can drink of the cup that I'm going to be drinking of? And they're like, oh yeah, you know it, buddy. Uh, that's the Bob Modern uh, translation. So, you know, they're, here it is, they're thinking Christ, Jesus is Christ, a Messiah, the, who's going to be the king and they think, oh, well, we're going to be the princes that are going to be ruling and reigning with him. 
Well, yeah, you're right. But the thing is, they're thinking it's going to be soon, and the, the thing is, is this, everything's done on God's time schedule, not ours. I mean, God has perfect timing. So verse 23. So are you, uh, are you going to be able to drink the cup that I am going to drink of and to be baptized with the baptism I am with? And they said, we are able. Verse 23. And he, Jesus, and he saith unto them, Oh yeah, well, ye shall drink indeed of my cup. Ye shall drink indeed of my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give. But it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my father. And when the ten heard it, they were moved with indignation against the two brethren. That means they were, indignation means uh, extreme anger. So, but the point is, Jesus is like, oh, you, you want to drink, you, you think you can drink of the cup that I'm going to be drinking of? Well, yeah, you're going to, but it's not what you're thinking here. So here it is, the disciples are thinking, oh yeah, we can drink of this cup. You're, you're going to be Christ the King, and we're going to be your princes. We're going to be your, your fellow rulers. Uh, that's what they're thinking. And, you know, they are right, but it's not until the New Jerusalem uh, well, I shouldn't say the New Jerusalem, but until Christ returns in glory, they're not going to be ruling nothing. So here it is, they're thinking they're going to rule in glory, but Christ was, um, there were other things that were going to have to happen first. So let's take a look at the cup that Christ was going to have to drink. Matthew 16, 21. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Hmm, okay. So, uh... Mark 9.31 For he taught his disciples and said unto them, The Son of Man is betrayed in the hands of men, and they shall kill him. And after that he is killed, he shall rise the third day. Okay. All right, let's go to Matthew chapter 26. And it came to pass, when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, Ye know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Now, let me tell you something. When you got crucified, uh, you didn't get out of there alive. I mean, they didn't take you down from the cross until you were dead. I mean, that's just the way it worked. I mean, they didn't crucify you and then pull the nails out and then let you walk away. That's not how it worked. Crucifixion was the death penalty, period. Verse 3. Then assembled together the chief priests, the Jewish priests, and the scribes and the elders of the people under the palace of the high priest who was called Caiaphas and consulted that they might take Jesus by subtlety and kill him. You know, I always uh, know I'm, I'm dealing with a deceiver when they say it was the Romans that killed Christ. Because the Bible clearly says who killed him, and it wasn't the Romans. I mean, Pilate tried to let him go three different times. 
okay? And yet they blame Pilate. Three times Pilate tried to release him. Three times. And consulted that they might take Jesus by subtlety, subtlety and kill him. But they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar among the people. Now when Jesus was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment, and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, to what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Jesus understood it, he say unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she hath wrought a good work unto me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Now, who was this woman? This woman understood that Jesus was going to be put to death. But the disciples, they don't seem to understand. So, you know, she put the ointment on him to, for, for his burial. You know? What does Jesus say in 13? Verily I say unto you that, uh, verily I say unto you, whosoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this, that this woman hath done, be told for a memorial of her. Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, do you know that Judas is the Greek rendering of the word Jew or Judah? Oh yeah. Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priests and said unto them, What will ye give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they covenanted with him for thirty pieces of silver. Do you know that that's in the Old Testament? Oh, yeah. Let's go to the Old Testament real quick. The book of Zechariah. Z-E-C-H-A-R-I-A-H, -H, chapter 11. If you want, you can read the whole chapter on your own to see that I'm not just pulling stuff out of context. But um, verse 10. And I took my staff, even beauty. So he's got a staff called beauty. And I took my staff, even beauty, and cut it asunder, that I might break my covenant, which I had made with all the people. What covenant? The Old Covenant, the Old Testament. God's going to break his covenant with the people. The law, you know, the, the law that God gave to Moses on the mountain. He's going to break that covenant. He's going to break it. Why? Because he's going to give you a new one that's even better. And I took my staff, even beauty, and cut it asunder, that I might break my covenant, which I had made with all the people. And it was broke, <clears throat> excuse me, and it was broken in that day. What day? The day of Christ's crucifixion. The covenant was broken, the old covenant. And it was broken in that day. And so the poor of the flock that waited upon me knew that it was the word of the Lord. And I said unto them, If ye think it good, give me my price, and if not, forbear. So they weighed for my price thirty pieces of silver. Isn't that what the Jews gave Judas to betray Christ? Oh, yeah. Verse 13. And the Lord said unto me, And the Lord said unto me, Cast it unto the potter, a goodly price that I was prized at of them. And I took the 30 pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of the Lord. 
Remember when Judas betrayed Christ and, and he was going to die and, and Judas said, you know, I betrayed innocent blood. And what did the Jews say? Well, what is that to us? Then he took the 30 pieces of silver and threw it in the, the Lord's temple. And what did they do? They said, well, we can't, we can't take this blood money and put it back in the treasury. You know, here it is. They're worried about one a little rule, but yet they lied to have Christ put to death. They're going to have Christ murdered with their lies, but they're worried about taking blood money and putting it back in the treasury. So what did they do? They took the money and bought uh, what they call the potter's field. Uh, basically, it was a burial ground for uh, the paupers. All right, let's go back to Matthew chapter 26. For, uh, let's go to verse 26. We'll go back to verse 14. And by the way, if you don't know it, 30 pieces of silver was the price of a slave or a servant. And we were all, well, we are all servants of sin. So, then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priests and said unto them, What will ye give me, and I will deliver him unto you? And they covenanted with him for thirty pieces of silver. And from that time he sought opportunity to betray him. Now the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover. And he said, Go into the city to such a man, and say unto him, The master saith, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Now when the even was come, he sat down with the twelve. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. And they were exceeding, exceedingly sorrowful and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast said. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread. Listen carefully. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and brake it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And, you know, Jesus many times has said he was the bread of life. Well, he is. Jesus is the bread of life. Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament. Do you know what the difference between a covenant and a testament is? A covenant, well, if I make a covenant with you, it's only in force until the day I die. When God makes a covenant with you, since God doesn't die, it's forever. But a testament is different. Uh, well, let me go in a little more detail. A covenant is in effect for a living person or God from the time that you make it. And with God, it's, in, it's forever. But with a person, when a person dies, the covenant is not in effect anymore. However, a testament 
does not go into effect until the person is dead. Have you ever heard of a last will and testament? You know, a father says, well, I got three sons and two daughters. In my last will and testament, I'm going to leave you, you know, my property, the house, and my whatever things that I have. Well, as long as he's alive, the last will and testament doesn't go into effect. Well, that's how that works. So Jesus said, for this is the blood of the New Testament. See, the Old Testament, if you want to try to keep the Old Covenant by keeping the 600 and something laws, you can try. You won't succeed. You'll fail and you'll go to hell. Tell that to the Jews. But Jesus said, I will make a new covenant. But it wouldn't go into effect until, you know, that's why he calls it the New Testament. Because when he dies, that's when the New Testament goes into effect. Now, let's face it, Christ died on the cross. Three days later, he rose from the dead. All right, let's take a look at Jeremiah chapter 31. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant, a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. See, Judah and Israel are not necessarily the same. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. You see, Israel broke the covenant. God didn't. They broke it. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. And then in uh, Hebrews 8.8, 8, For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Hebrews 8.13, In that he saith, A new covenant he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. Hebrews 12, 24, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. All right, so let's go back to Matthew 26, verse 28. It's 27. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. You know, uh, the sons of Zebedee wanted to uh, drink of the cup. <laughs> They're thinking, oh, we're going to be rulers. We're going to be rulers. And Christ is thinking, uh, well, yeah, but before you get that, I'm going to be crucified. And do you realize that out of the 10 disciples, uh, I'm sorry, out of the 12 disciples, 10 of them died for their faith. Judas hung himself. John, who wrote the book of Revelation, he's the only one that died of old age. And according to legend, uh, they tried to kill him and they couldn't. 
So they banished him to the Isle of Patmos. They tried to kill him, and they couldn't do it. He wouldn't die. I don't know how true that is, but uh, Paul, you know, Paul, uh, who I believe Paul replaced Judas, uh, Paul died for his faith, Stephen died for his faith, Mark, Luke, they all died for their faith, almost all of them. I mean, uh, Christians died for their faith. Oh, yeah, you want to drink of the cup that Christ has? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we'll do that. All right, let's go. Verse 30. And when they had sung in him, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Then saith Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. you got to love Peter. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. Boy, I tell you what, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to argue with Jesus, but that's just me. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. You didn't know Jesus was a southerner, did you? I'm going to go pray yonder. That's my interjection of humor. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here, and watch with me. And he went a little further, and fell on his face, and prayed, saying, Listen carefully. O my Father, if it be possible, let this cup, let this cup pass from me. O my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples, and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Boy, ain't that the truth. Verse 42. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O my Father, if this cup, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. Boy, that's some heavy stuff, huh? O oh, my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me except I drink it, thy will be done. Yeah, the disciples get to drink of the same cup. Jesus was crucified unto death, a, a horrible, painful death to appease the wrath of God the Father for our sins. People don't get it. I mean, they just don't get it. Oh, let's go to the book of Isaiah. Probably the most quoted book by Jesus in the New Testament. We're going to go to Isaiah 53. This is a book you'll never hear, virtually never hear preached by a rabbi in a synagogue. Isaiah 53, verse 1. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? 
For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Who's this talking about? Christ. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one from his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Wow, that's some heavy stuff, huh? Verse 7, He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities." Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Now there's a parallel verse uh, passage of this in Luke chapter 22. In verse 40, And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw, and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in an agony, and being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said to them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. All right, we're going to read another parallel passage, John chapter 18. We're going to read starting in verse 1. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Sidron, where was a garden, and uh, into the which he entered and his disciples. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus oft times resorted thither with his disciples. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, 
Come thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Uh, some people will try to tell you that these are Roman soldiers. No, they're not. I don't think so. A band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees. The Pharisees were Jews, okay? They were, you know, the, 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 the priests had their own police force. I mean, the temple had its own police force. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Can you imagine that? All these soldiers, Jesus says, I am he. They went backward and fell on the ground. Uh, you know, that's, I'd be, I, you, I, I'd be, I'd be plenty scared if that happened. Then asked he them again saying, I'm sorry, then asked he them again, whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way. In other words, you want me, take me, but leave my disciples alone. That the saying might be fulfilled which he spake, of them which thou gavest me have I lost none. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into the sheath. He didn't tell him, Oh, get rid of that sword. We don't want any violence here. No, he said, Put it back in the sheath. Put up thy sword into the sheath. The cup, the cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? The cup which my father hath given me, Shall I not drink it? Then the band and the captain and the officers of the Jews. Then the band and the captain and the officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him and led him away to An An Annas first, for he was father-in-law to Caiaphas, which was the high priest that same year. Now Caiaphas was he which gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. Oh yeah, one man should die for the people, and that man is Christ. Now, here's an interesting verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, starting in verse 19. What say I then, that the idol is anything, or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Let's read that again. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? And the answer is no, you're not. All right, so the, uh, the high priest capture Jesus, they take him, they have a, a trial of what they call the Sanhedrin. So, let's go to John chapter 18, and then we're going to read verse uh, 28, and then we're going to read John chapter 19 to the crucifixion. John 18, 28. 
Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment, and it was early. Now Caiaphas is the high priest, the Jewish priest. And they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. So here it is. They have no problem uh, putting false accusations against Jesus, and they're going to have him murdered. But God forbid they go into the judgment hall of the Gentiles that they'll be defiled and can't eat the Passover. This is the mind of the Pharisees, the Jews. Verse 29. Pilate then went out unto them and, and said, What accusation bring ye against this man? They answered and said unto him, If he were not a malefactor, we would not have delivered him unto thee. Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death, that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? You know, what, what did you do? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. Oh, but I thought it was the Romans that killed him. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Maybe if you're of the truth, you hear Christ's voice. And if you're not of the truth, you don't hear Christ's voice. Verse 38. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. You know, I don't see anything wrong with this guy. You know, why are you bringing him here and having me want, wanting me to kill this guy? I, I don't see nothing wrong with him. What's going on? What's up? What's your beef? Verse 39. But ye have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers platted a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews! And they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Then came Jesus for, uh, forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Uh, purple was the color of royalty, people. And he's got a crown of thorns. Not a crown of gold. And Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man. When the chief priests therefore and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him! Crucify him! 
Now, if you think it was the Romans that were responsible for this, let me read verse 6 again. When the chief priests, the Jewish priests, when the, when the chief priests, therefore, and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid. Now, let me tell you something. When you're a ruler of a territory, and you get somebody like Jesus running around that's got thousands of people following him, you are most certainly going to send spies to follow and find out what, what this guy is saying. And if, and if you're smart, you're going to send spies that don't know each other because you want to get stories from you know several different spies that tell you, you know, so that you can get an accurate picture of what this guy is teaching. You better believe Pilate had sent spies and listened to Jesus preach and had watched Jesus perform miracles, healing the sick, healing the lame, maybe even raising the dead like Lazarus. You know, and when you get different people that don't know each other, several different spies, and they're all telling you the same stories, you're thinking, hmm, maybe there's some truth to this. But then the Jews answered him, we have a law, and by our law he ought to die because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid. You better believe Pilate knew a lot of stuff going on about Christ. And when he heard that he said he was the Son of God, even Pilate was afraid. The Jews weren't afraid. Oh, no. But Pilate was. Verse 9, And went again into the judgment hall, and saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then said Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee, and have power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou couldest have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. And from next time somebody tells you that Rome killed Jesus, rebuke them in the name of the Lord and quote John chapter 19 and verse 12 the King James Bible. And from thenceforth, Pilate sought to release him. Pilate wanted to release Jesus. But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. Oh yeah, you let Jesus go and we're going to go to Caesar and charge you with treason, which is punishable by death. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover about the sixth hour, and he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified, and they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, 
which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two other with him, on either side one and Jesus in the midst. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. The title then read many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city, and it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Then said the chief priests of the Jews to Pilate, Write not the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Well, let's skip down to verse 30. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. All right, let's take a look at Matthew chapter 27. Uh, let's see. We're going to read a parallel account of crucifixion. Matthew 27, verse 37. And set up over his head this his accusation written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads, and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests, mocking him with the scribes and elders, said, He saved others. Himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The thieves also which were crucified with him cast the same in his teeth. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness, darkness over all the land, unto the ninth hour. It's three hours of darkness. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Here it is. Jesus is speaking in Hebrew or Aramaic, which is a, a uh, dialect of Hebrew. But what are the Jews saying? Next verse. Some of them that stood there, when they heard that, said, This man calleth for Elias. Uh, he's calling for Elijah. They didn't even understand Jesus speaking Hebrew. Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And the Jews are saying, Oh, this man's calling for Elias. Which is... You know, I don't, you know, everybody says, oh, the new, you know, Matthew was written in Hebrew and then mistranslated into Greek. I don't think so. I don't think as many Jews spoke Hebrew as they think they did. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. The new covenant people, the veil of the temple was rent in twain, it was ripped in half from the top, God, to the bottom, man. And the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened. And many bodies of the saint, saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. And when the centurion and they that were with him watch, watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son 
of God. Even a Roman centurion that didn't know the scriptures knew truly this was the Son of God. Can you imagine how the Jews felt when uh, people that were dead, the graves opened up and, and sent the saints that were dead, came, rose up from the dead and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many? How's that for a testimony, huh? So, all right, well, that was the cup of the Lord that he had to drink. Now, now we're going to read, uh, well, the next study. I'm going to try to conclude this with the next study. It'll be on the cup of wrath of Babylon. Oh, yeah, God's going to give Babylon a cup to drink. But it's not going to be this cup. So, all right, well, I hope you found this enlightening and all blessings praise glory and honor to jesus who is the lamb of god slain before the foundation of the world all blessings praise and glory and honor to him and him alone in jesus name amen